Good afternoon, everyone, or good evening. You know, whenever I was blessed to do my studies in theology in seminary at the North American College in Rome, it was the first time that I had sort of ever really lived with or been introduced to other people, seminarians from all over the nation, people from dioceses from most all of the 50 states. And we were blessed because we were living in Rome and got to, on a daily basis, eat the wonderful Italian food. But sometimes, at the North American College, the food was not as stellar as you might imagine, particularly whenever they tried to cook American food. It really didn't work out very well. And so, while most of the other house suffered, the folks from, the students from Louisiana, and there weren't a lot of us, had another plan. We had, in the course of our time there, shipped over from Louisiana our different Cajun spices. Back then, we'd often use Tony Sastry's, but of course now we would, of course, use Cajun Power because the owners of Cajun Power belong to this parish, Deacon Kobe and his family, so we only advocate the use of Cajun Power. <laughs> but we'd use it. We'd put it on everything, whether it be our pasta or our salad, on the terrible hamburgers they make, or whatever we would have. And it would give us great delight to sort of kill off the flavor that wasn't there or to add flavor to stuff that really was very bland and disgusting. And so what we began to realize is that some of our brothers in the house, particularly those from states like North Dakota, South Dakota, Nebraska, which basically are pretty much all the same state, but <laughs> the food was not very good there. So we realize here that having food is not great, and they come from a place which has no good food. And so we would say, hey, would you like to borrow some of our Tony Sacheries or some of our Cajun power? And they said yes. And so but pretty soon they came to realize how good this was. And so they'd come to our table and say, hey, can, can we borrow some of your, 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 your Cajun spices? And we'd say, sure. But eventually what happened is that these other individuals from other states, they said, this is so good, we're going to get some for ourselves. And so they would go and they would get their own spices, normally from us because we were pretty good entrepreneurs. We'd have cases shift over and then we'd sell them a little jacked up price to these other individuals. And we never force it on them. We never go there and say, your manicotti is terrible. Here, here's some, some Cajun power. No, we never forced it. But they begin to realize from what they experienced and are sharing it with them, but also seeing the pleasure that we took in putting in our own food, they wanted it as part of their own lives. And so pretty soon, by the time that I had left, every table had some form of Cajun seasoning on it. Why do I bring up that story? Because I think in a certain sense it connects to today's gospel. We at the North American College, and I guess all of us here, live in southern Louisiana, love our Cajun spices, love our Cajun food, love our Cajun culture, and we want to and are willing to share it with others, to tell other people, what are you doing putting ketchup on that stuff? Put some of this Cajun power. What are you doing in this miserable cold state that has no good food, no good music? You should use some of this. It's a way of sharing our own joy and our culture, and it helps to transform their lives. In fact, no matter where you go in the world now, you're going to see on the spice shelf, you're going to see some form of Cajun seasoning. The world realizes how good Cajun seasoning is, and they want to have it in their own lives. It connects to the gospel because even though in Jesus' time they didn't have Cajun power, they didn't have all of those spices, they had salt. They had salt, which they put on food in order to draw flavor out of it, to give it some flavor. The matzo balls don't taste very good. Let's put some salt on it. That's how they went and flavored their own food. And so Jesus knows this and is using this as a metaphor for explaining the spread of the gospel. We are called to be the salt of the earth, 
to have the salt and we're supposed to share it with others. Others who have miserable food, others whose lives are bland, others who don't know the joy of Christ. And so just like the Cajuns want to share their own spices, we need to be willing to share the salt of the gospel that the Lord has given to us. But the truth is this, and I think if we're honest, we'll all admit it. We have less difficulty in general sharing our Cajun spices and our Cajun culture than as Christians sharing the salt of the gospel. It's a sad reality, but it's true. We'll go up to complete strangers and say, man, you need to put some Cajun spices on that food. But to go up to a complete stranger and say, do you know about Jesus in the gospel? Oh, we don't want to do that. Way out of our comfort zone. Why is that though? Why is it we're so proud of our Cajun culture and we're going to tell people about all the great food that we have and our spices, but when it comes to talk about salvation, we don't want to do it. We don't want to do it. And I think there's several reasons why. One is, is the obvious one. We're fearful. Fearful that someone may laugh at us. Fearful that we may be rejected. Fearful that someone may say, I don't want to be your friend anymore. Fear that someone's going to say, we're crazy. And so as a result, we keep the salt to ourselves. We don't share it because we're afraid of being rejected. We have no fear of going up to somebody and saying, you need to put some Cajun seasoning on that. If someone says, well, I don't like it. I prefer my ketchup. I prefer my Mrs. Dash. We're going to say, you're an idiot. We're going to sit and get a fight over it with him. But we're not going to go and talk to anybody about the gospel because we're too scared. The other real issue that we have is that we've bought into, to a great degree, the fact and the teaching and the idea that faith is something you should keep private for yourself. Everybody has their own faith. Everybody is entitled to believe what they want to believe. But you keep your salt sacred to yourself. You don't share it with anybody else. Put it on your own gumbo. You put it on your own rice and gravy. But you don't give it to other people. Everybody has their own salt shaker. Everybody does what they want, they want to do with it. But that's the reality is it's not the gospel. It's not what Jesus says. Jesus doesn't say, you are the salt of the earth. So put some on your food and then put it back in your pantry. Keep it to yourself. That's what the gospel's about. No. He says, you are the salt of the earth, go share it with others. Others need to experience it. You need to bring flavor into the lives of others. Nobody says, oh, you know, oh, my Cajun culture is, should be kept to myself. I'm going to keep it to myself. I'm going to keep my language, my food, everything to myself. We're going to keep it right here. No, the Cajuns want to bring it everywhere. Like I said, you can't go to any, any grocery store in the nation without seeing some form of Cajun spices there. Nor can you go to any major city without seeing a Cajun restaurant. Just don't go eat there because it's usually pretty terrible. Put hot dogs in the gumbo or some garbage like that. But it doesn't matter. It tastes better than the food they have in South Dakota. But we cannot do that with our faith. We're willing to spread and share. We, don't, we want it to be public, our Cajun culture and our food. But we can't do the same thing with our faith. We want to keep it to ourselves, but we've got to share it. We've got to put our salt in other people's food to make their lives more delicious, to transform their existence. The third point is, and I think the one that's the most important, and the reason I think a lot of people are hesitant to go and share the salt that they've been given is because ultimately they don't really think it's that great of a thing. Or maybe more particular in southern Louisiana where everybody's Catholic, we take it for granted. There's always salt on the table. I always have some salt to put on my food. I'm Catholic. I was baptized. I was confirmed. I went to Catholic school. But no big deal. Let me go do something else. Let me go entertain myself in another way. We take it for granted. It's nothing real special to us. But when it comes to our Cajun food or our Cajun culture, oh, we want to share with other people because it means a lot to us. It transforms our lives. It's important. So we want to give it to other people. We only want to share things with others that we value ourselves. 
that we can say, this has really changed my life. It's made my food a lot better. I want you to experience that. But if we really don't care, we're not gonna share with other people. Nobody from North Dakota goes around and says, man, you gotta try my North Dakota food. This is the best thing you've ever eaten. You don't go into a store and see North Dakota spices on the shelf. There's no North Dakota restaurant. Maybe like Golden Corral is, or Ryan's or something. <laughs> they, don't, they don't have that. Because nobody wants to eat that food. But they want to eat the Cajun food. Because we know it's valuable and we share it with others. But what about the gospel? Are we willing to share it with others? Or do we keep it to ourselves because eh, it's not that important? It really doesn't mean that much. So that's the resolution for today. As we meditate a little bit on the gospel. To be able to say, where do I stand in this? Do I value my Cajun culture more than I value my Christian faith? Am I more willing to share my vital of Cajun power than I am the salt of the gospel? It's something that I think all of us here are intelligent enough to understand. How would I know that? Because none of us here are watching the Super Bowl, which means none of us are Patriots fans. So we all have intelligence. <laughs> we can understand the depth of the gospel here and how it should be applied to our lives. We've been given this great gift of the salt, the gospel. And we need to have just as much, no even more passion about sharing with others as we do with our own Cajun culture and our own Cajun spices. Not because we have to, but because we realize it's something good. And not only do others we want to share with others, but people should see the salt that's changed our lives and said, I want a part of that. Just as my Yankee friends back at the North American College saw how we loved our food and said, I want to taste that. It's not just what we say, but what we do in allowing the salt of the gospel to transform our lives so we can draw others to Christ. Amen.